oh god don't you just want to aren't you so pissed that now you're like, doing brunch right yeah, now? yeah yeah i was just gonna say you want to you delete this episode oh boy brunch hit it boys Are we um, we giving away the the milk for free? Are we giving giving the milk to to Bud Light here? We're giving the milk to Bud Light? I don't know. I don't know if I understand that expression. But why uh, buy the cow when you can have the milk for free? You've never you've never heard that before. I've heard that before, but I'm trying to think of my my, my brain is running what at like it means? five miles per day today. That fast? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, so like, w- what we're g- we're giving them a little a little bit of a freebie. Yeah, like yeah. The milk well, why buy the cow when you can buy the why buy, like. get get the milk for free? That's right. Is I think it's like when people move in together, someone's judgmental parent says it about one of them. Like, why aren't you getting married or whatever? But um, we're giving Bud Light the milk because we're we're all decked out in Bud Light gear right now because they sent us a bunch of stuff, which is challenging. Because it's not what we asked for. <laughs> we said sponsor the podcast. Mm-hmm. Sponsor it. And they said, what are your addresses? Got something we think you'll like. And we were like, is it going to be a sponsorship? Like, stripper like a- and a birthday cake going <laughs> to jump out and say, no, not that we needed to be a stripper, but just like person in a birthday cake. It's the cake. Bud Light night. Yes. That inside the birthday cake. Of the birthday cake. Classic Bud Light birthday cake or Budweiser. It's up to them. Bud Light seltzer even and says, Okay, it's now You've been knighted for the sponsorship. Presented by right. Brunch's Wikipedia page will have the thing of when it's a famous British person, you know? Oh in yes. Parentheses, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like Sir. Right. It's like I th- I'm sure Paul McCartney is Sir Paul McCartney on Wikipedia. And then it has in parentheses like a bunch of Roman numerals and everything that mean that they've been knighted or something like that. Anyway, when they said they're sending us something, we were like, I don't know how you can send us a sponsorship, but we trust you. And they sent us a bunch of Bud Light seltzers. Very cool. Limited edition. Limited, right. So you guys, you want to Out of go office to Bud, Light, uh, Bud Light seltzers. No shot at getting them, folks. Very appropriate for me. I'm extremely out of Hell office yeah. for the next two weeks. Hell um, yeah. But no, I was I was very excited to get them, even if it's not what we asked for. The Bud Light Seltzer flavors sound amazing. Um, a little disappointed that there was only four. There's one of each Same. flavor. I was like, damn, what the hell? It was a big box, too. Yeah, they sent right? us a big box, minimal packing peanuts. Yep. Uh, so when you open it up, you're like, wow, this is it. It looked like they were sending us a, a new wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. So I was so excited. Open it up. Presentation. A, a, a thousand percent a, a hundred out of a hundred great job and you open it up it had these fun shirts which we'll get to in a minute yeah uh these shades and four count them four bud light seltzers one of my friends was very excited because they've had them and said that two of them are very very good i forget Ooh. which ones they said were good but we've got some tasty things that were sent to us courtesy of Bud Light, but I, we're a couple of chumps right now because yeah. we're talking about it and pumping them no up sponsorship when yet. they're not sponsoring us. So this is a challenging relationship you're it's, carving out for yourselves, Bud Light. It's all over the place, and it's especially uh, it's especially confusing because we were talking about we want to do a Budweiser versus Bud Light like a uh, like yeah, sort of in house rivalry yeah. um, on the podcast, and they sent us Bud Light seltzers. Which, like, I guess that falls under the umbrella of Bud Light, but like, tangent. I think we want Bud Light Seltzer. I think that our goal should be Bud Light Seltzer because Bud Light Seltzer gives us that longer name, which we love. <laughs> we love the idea. Brunch presented by Budweiser Light Seltzer Mango Daiquiri Lemonade. <laughs> Hell yeah! We want that long ass name. Plus. Posted a few of these pics on the gram. A lot of response. I, I, I got a, an influx of washed uh, followers yesterday because they talked about how I how my uh, Instagram handle 
is a disaster. Oh yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> absolutely no way of promoting that. Right. So I just got like a sea of uh, wash people. What's up, everybody? <laughs> and they responded to the pictures of this stuff with like, "What the hell are you doing?" That's not busy. That's right. Right. Yeah. So it'd like be one uh, thing if, if we sent like if we were like, "Hey, the Bud Light sent us a bunch of stuff," they'd be like, "Cool." Get paid. Get that back, even though that is literally not what we're doing. Right <laughs> now, right. we're giving them free publicity. They were just like, what the hell is that? Don't, don't do this. We ride with Vizzy. So I like the idea of the rivalry between us and the other podcasts. We also did a I, – well, I did a Bud Light Seltzer at the Revs game this yeah. weekend. I did the Bud Light Seltzer Lemonade, and it was like a strawberry lemonade? Yes. It was the weirdest drink order of all time because we went to the craft beer craft ale house mm-hmm. that's inside of gillette stadium which i didn't know existed very cool it's awesome um i got an imperial ipa and a bud light seltzer yes. lemonade watermelon uh and i as i was walking back to my seat double fisting the tall boys i was getting one nostril just a strong ipa and the other on nostril just the most sugary yes. lemonade seltzer that you could ever imagine and it was just so confusing for my brain we were sitting there talking watching the game and you were holding both of them up and i think the one that you had closest to me was the strawberry lemonade bud light seltzer presented by vizzy and i just like you were you were saying something i don't even think you were drinking it i don't think it was on your breath yet no i was like my man i am (laughs) smelling nothing but the strongest delicious smelling yeah it's great strawberry yeah. lemonade style you, you tasted it you said that it was the bomb it was really good uh very strong sugary aftertaste that mm-hmm. sticks with you a little bit so there was sugar in it <laughs> yeah and uh that that stuff's got to be heartburn city Ooh, i got some i got See, st- bud light sponsor the podcast and we can't say these th- kind of things because that's be, right we're company men right we're keeping it real right now you want us to be ambassadors Right. You want us to lie our tushies off? You want off? us to sell out? We yeah. got you. All right, so let's complain about the free stuff we got. Let's, okay. let's do it. Let's Hell have yeah. the conversation. Uh, this, first of all, these are both XL. I like that they were like, hmm, depending on when this gets to DJ, he's moving in a direction that we think, even for an oversized shirt like this, we might want to play it safe, toss him an XL. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, there's two people on this podcast, and one of them is never XL. I'm never XL. But all right, right now, I'll be honest, I'm like pushing large to maybe sometimes if XL. You could, if you commit, you can make it to XL. Definitely. Give me a week. <laughs> right. Give me a week. I was going to say. Ice cream store down the down the street over yeah. here uh, open today and t- just fantastic ice cream. If you want to fit in that shirt a little bit after the podcast, yeah. let's take a trip. Grow, in, grow into <laughs> yeah. it. If I want to grow into it. Uh, so there's two people on the podcast. One of them is in an XL. Thank you very much. We'll though. never be an XL, right? Um, certainly not with the gyms closed or whatever gyms are. I don't know. What's the gym this week? Quite, nice. quite, quite hurting right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm in pain. You got that first time at the gym in more than how many days? How many do you can you go without the gym? Where going to the gym ruins you? Uh, like I think two like, weeks plus. I would say like. After a month and a half, two months of going steadily, you you build up enough tolerance, yeah, and then it doesn't doesn't you don't get s- too sore anymore. But if you if you're cold for like say two weeks, three weeks, uh, probably longer than that. Like yeah, how like long does it take to turn it off? Four to six, yeah, probably around there. And then you're like, oh no, it is. It's amazing when you haven't been to the gym in a while and you do anything, no matter what length of time people say it is. They're like, oh man, when when you haven't been to the gym in a little bit. It isn't just two days. It's like five days. And I'm like, it's legitimately a week and a half of pain. I have for sure gone over a week of soreness. It depends on, on the uh, on the muscle. Like legs. Yeah. W- legs will get you for like days. But arms, chest, eh, two days max, two, three days max. You never did the November project, right? No. What's you know that? You know what that is? No. Andrew Ferentz was big into that. It was a, it's a thing that you go to the Harvard steps, uh, the Harvard stadium, and you just climb the steps all the way around nope. and everybody goes like this. It's this huge group that goes, you show up, they're so supportive. They're so nice. And it is what it is. It's a painful workout, but everyone is so nice and so supportive. 
and the one time I went, I'd been doing morning workouts a lot. I've been doing group workouts for a while, and I was like, you know what? I'm I'm ready. I'm gonna go to the big, popular one with a bajillion people, and who cares if it's tough? Whatever, it's exercising. You're supposed to look embarrassing, and I'm I don't know, maybe halfway around the stadium. Mm-hmm. Maybe even a quarter of the way. Who knows? Maybe they might start the beginners with uh, just halfway around because it really does smoke you. And I'm climbing up, and I've got – I'm struggling through it, but I'm doing it. And apparently I had my hands on my legs, on my thighs, like just kind of laboring. Yeah. And they're so supportive. They're so nice. So even when they're like, hey, do it differently, they're still so nice. The guy was like – my man, you're killing it. Do me a favor. Go Bluetooth. That's what we call hands free. And I was like, oh man. It's not what you want to hear. Not what support. you want to hear. Yeah. yeah, it sounded like Fuck I came you, so close to yeah. telling that guy to fuck himself. Yeah. He's like, oh, he's leading all these people through this huge workout for free. Any other instructor person be making hundreds of dollars off this. And he's like, you kind of want to get angry at somebody though. Like, yeah. It's either got to be like, got to be really supportive and like just going to piss you off that they're that nice or they got to be real dicks and then you get mad at them and it just makes you furious and you get more motivated that's what i miss about working out with friends like yeah i i I haven't gone benching or lifting with a friend in forever last time i went lifting with a buddy was with uh ted johnson i think he's quite a friend to go lifting with I th- I think he surpassed me that day. I think he finally caught up to to me, his lifted max, even a little more. His max was like a little bit, like yeah, two and a half, two and a half pounds, a little better than you. Yeah, but like when you're going with someone who's kind of on your level, Ted's stronger than me. If you go with someone who's kind of on your level, uh, but ahead of you, that's always super fun because they'll be like. Three more, three more. You could do it. And you're like, yeah, and you can go fuck yourself. It's like the only time you're super mean to somebody, and there's so much, there's so much love there. So, Bud Light, don't think we forgot about you. Cut the shit, uh, cut the shit, and cut the check. Gotta say, white glasses, not for me. I uh, white tell you sunglasses. What, are these? I mean, look at this, viewers. That is the only Bud Light placement Ooh. there that's a great shot there it is that is a great shot actually but that's it though yeah it's i mean like, like at least they didn't like sh- like you know the uh the the glasses that sometimes have the the stuff across like the the lenses yeah and it's like like party on or whatever mm-hmm. or like spring break uh they were uh very minimalistic on the uh on the product placement there is more space allotted to made in china made in china than there is to Bud Light Seltzer, even the little silver things that are on Wayfarers, those are, I think, bigger than the space that says Bud Light Seltzer, which to me, that's just a lack of confidence, Bud Light Seltzer. It means you think you're not going to be around. People are going to need to scratch that off and move on with their lives. Never. Yeah. But I'd plaster it all over it. So Thoughts on white sunglasses? I'm down. I almost bought some white sunglasses over the weekend. Yeah, I sent you a picture of them for my. Uh, oh yeah, those don't. My count, rollerblading, though. but those are all. Th- those are more about the, the lenses. Uh, lenses yeah. than I, I. I'm considering getting some really loud sunglasses for rollerblading. Those are like the the like the Macho Man Randy Savage sunglasses. Don't watch Harry Potter. Don't know what you're talking about. It's the ones but that that David Pasternak wore at the uh, at yeah, the outdoor game. Right. That They're, style. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so loud and so – I'll wear some loud stuff, but those are so, so, so not me Yeah. that I'm considering getting them just for the sake the of having something. Of it. Yeah. Like, that's a, that's a wild thing. They're not like, I don't know, A-Rod glasses, did they call them? Is that what they called them back in the day? Like, A-Rod had the glasses, like baseball player glasses that they kind of looked like Batman wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what you're those about, were yeah. big back in the day. Never did those. I always thought that sporty sunglasses were kind of lame. I liked T Pain's Oakleys though. T Pain had some ones like that that were really cool. I'm a big fan of any uh sports sunglasses that look like Rex Specs. So that's how I ended up finding my way to those. I was like, what if I got goggles and Hell yeah. just skated around? Catch me wearing goggles, rollerblading around, slowing down on the hills, which I've learned to do. Shout out me. And then I was like, or I could just get some really noisy ass sunglasses because at least those can double for something else. If I'm wearing Rex Specs to the club, people are gonna think I'm an asshole. <laughs> you ain't going to the club, <laughs> right? I don't know. I might I got some good compliments on this shirt so far, <laughs> and I've joked that 
you can catch me wearing it <laughs> Friday, Saturday evenings all summer. Um, Blade update. I'm also now team yeah. Blade Gang. I uh, I felt a little felt a little bad about jumping on the bandwagon, but like I we were talking like last week after we discussed the 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 Blade situation, and I was like, I got a, a parking lot right across the street from my house. Uh, I, I'm now that I think about it, like this summer, just going across the street, strapping on some blades and ripping some Rip pucks and some, in, yeah. in, in some street hockey pucks into uh into a net. That sounds like a delightful time. And so I just like bought a net. I bought uh, blades. I bought a street hockey stick. I bought balls. And uh, now we're ready to we're ready to rumble. Summer shaping up. You get uh, you, you did not mention protective equipment. Do you get pads? I did not. Uh, having a pa- stick what? is going to help. I mean, yeah. if, if you're just going if, I, if you're just going out for a stroll or a skate around Rip. town. You gotta wear something. Really? Yeah, you gotta. I what do you? Uh, what do you? I, I, I know that that uh, Blade Gang shut out Mike Grinnell. A lot of people will just go out there and raw dog it, uh, and chances are you're fine if you're like, if you're on like a you know how clean to stop. <laughs> path and it's all straight and it's level and there's no scenario where you're gonna be saying, "Oh shit, I need to immediately do something." Mm-hmm. Then that's probably safe. But just in general, I mean, at least get some wrist guard things. Those are fine. They're not so they're they don't get in the way of doing anything. And if you were to fall, like I would, like when I was bombing down that street and didn't know how to slow down, I would have felt so much better even if I had wrist guards because I'd at least be able Drag to like a hand maybe throw my <laughs> 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 no, I would rip my legs up if I <laughs> went and did that. But yeah, get some stuff. What's your what's your situation protection wise? I got I got a thing. It was thirty dollars off of Amazon. It was. Uh, it was knee pads and I was gonna say I would guards. Feel pretty good about knee pads. Yeah, yeah, and it looks. Who who cares how it looks? Especially if it it depends. It all depends on what you're doing. Yeah. Like, and if you're if you're just going and I'll be honest. Have you how many times have you gone out and used them so far? I haven't yet. Okay, like you're gonna fall down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. So, uh, but having a stick is gonna help a lot with balance. That's true. But if you were to just head out, like no no offense, like if I fucked up on a st- actually i don't know you don't you're not going to be in a situation where you're gonna be bombing down a hill no yeah like i'm going to be much safer in the way that i approach my blading yeah you're gonna put your yeah you're gonna put yourself in a position to succeed but i will say the uh the asphalt across the street is not the quality that i thought it was mm-hmm. that school needs to, to yeah, shape I was gonna up you're gonna call the town yeah complain the school needs to shape up because that parking uh that parking lot's got a lot of cracks in it and that could be dangerous. Yeah. So you got all the time to do that because uh, you, for a, a time, all of us for a time at some points, uh, don't have a job. How about that? That is uh, that is true. That is exactly what's happening. I've got two weeks of unemployment. Some might call it fun employment. <laughs> <laughs> I coined that right there myself. <laughs> uh, That's really good. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be a one hell of a time. I'm excited about <laughs> yeah, it. I, I, I would think so. Fun <laughs> employment. That's... Oh, that's great. We should call this episode that. Fun employment. Be the first to ever do it. May be the first to congratulate us on uh, on f- coining the term fun employment. Fun employment. That's that's awesome. You should. We should make some merch off of that or something. That's I, right. Yeah. Did you uh, change your like profile Twitter profile to uh, fun employed? I did not. I ch- I changed my uh, Twitter profile to uh, the quote from "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia." It's like, oh, get a job. What am I going to strap ah, on my job helmet? Get jobbies. S- yeah, get into the job cam and uh, fire off into to job land and where jobbies grow on trees. Fun employment. Oh my god, that's 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 too much fun. <laughs> that is that's sensational. Um, I just had the Dunkin' Donuts grilled cheese thing. Sick Dun- transition. Yeah, Dunkin' wants to uh, get in on this. <laughs> on this comp. I mean, if Dunkin' Donuts doesn't sponsor Affleck Week, what the hell are they doing? That'd be incredible if we get enough people to support our podcast and we turn that into somebody else <laughs> giving us money instead. That's right. Or in addition. Uh, right? Affleck Week, we are 25 people away from Affleck Week. Crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've been – once we started to get towards 200, people s- really slowed down with jumping in. Uh, so I'm hoping it's going to be a thing like on Twitter when you hit a benchmark of followers – where I'm, I'm convinced Twitter just 
makes a bunch of people up and gives you more. You're never exactly at like 10,000 followers. When you, like, the second you hit 10,000 followers, like, oh, you're I'm at, at like, 12,000. Yeah, you're at like yeah. 10,700 yeah. immediately. So hopefully it's something like that. If you want to jump in the Patreon life, listen to brunch.com slash Patreon. Get the video That's episodes. Patreon.com slash listen to Patreon.com slash uh, Patreon. <laughs> get video episodes. Get bonus episodes Friday. We got a whopper coming up Friday because we're answering some of your questions from the buzz box. And I've only seen a couple of the questions, but they both are absolutely ridiculous. And really just those two questions in and of themselves are enough for us to do a crazy episode. So very excited about that. And if we get to 225, we're so close. Just fucking do it. We'll do Affleck week. It'd be great if we get it during Pete's uh, fun employment. Fun, yeah. <laughs> That tickles me. If we, uh, it'd be great if we get to it during this next couple of weeks. So then uh, Pete here can uh, devote a lot of his time to coming up with different things we can do. And it'll just be easier if we're both not busy when it's going on. So listen to brunch. What is our? Patreon.com slash listen to brunch. Where does Wash come in? Uh, after the presented by Bud Light Seltzer uh, divided by busy times <laughs> washed media. Jesus, Pete, you're uh, you're putting the uh, the fun and uh, well fun employment. Fun employment. Yep. Oh, this is too tricky. Another complaint about the shirts. Uh, this doesn't seem like a true Revere collar to me. This is just like a normal collar. This type of shirt should have a Revere collar. Right? Is that like the the secondary color or whatever? The thing where the it inside? like folds down. It's it's the same color, but it's uh it's almost like a little crease here, and it looks like a it's almost like a tuxedo type of thing. I feel like it's like a lapel. Uh, you got you got a little hamburger meat going on, and I feel like we're we're very close to being like Miami Vice kind of like de- detectives on the beach. Yeah, I, I like that. Where like we both have a costume and or a disguise. One of us like got more into it than the other one like yeah. you just put it on over your work clothes like you can see the like outline of a badge underneath like your <laughs> left breast <laughs> it's like the scene in the wire where they're trying to go undercover in season one and uh and omar is like no 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 we can spot you from a mile away it's like your shoes are clean and they're like they're like ripping like some of the the shirts and stuff and just making them look like a real uh like a real junkie so that they don't get spotted on the streets Interesting. Yeah. That'd be an okay Halloween costume. An undercover cop. And you just wear street clothes, but I don't know. Just like, really bad just, at Yeah, it. just have like a badge underneath your clothes or something like that. Underneath your clothes. Got to put that on the as referenced on brunch playlist. What, who, who sings that? Shakira, Shakira. You oh. know, underneath your clothes. I think it was off her first album. It was a ballad. Underneath your clothes. There's an endless story. You don't know that? No, I don't think so. Uh, my Shakira impression fucking pretty good. sucks. Pretty good. No, it was fucking pretty terrible. Good. <laughs> it just sounded like a shitty dude doing falsetto stuff. And God. No better right, feeling than that's when a you... That's podcast. Yeah, <laughs> no better feeling than when you do an impression for the first time and realize, like... You nailed it. I do a fucking good... If I work on this a little bit, I can do this. No worse feeling than dying. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to talk about going to a bar because we did that. We did do that. Um, yeah, why not? I was gonna. We're gonna. Get, we, do we want to get into awesome some Oscar stuff at some point? Because uh, yeah, we had a weird Oscars experience this year, and um, I will say the the people were upset at us that we didn't do the Oscars uh, the Oscars uh, mini podcast that we usually do. I think a lot of people rely on us for those podcasts. Good. I feel bad about it. Uh, so I feel bad about it too, but I also feel good that. This is the best I've felt to have disappointed somebody because it confirms that Something the that Oscar we really stuff like. we do and, and that we love doing yeah. is good. So I wish we'd done that, too. I mean, we could make this uh, a post-Oscars Oscars podcast of sorts because I did see all the Best Picture noms. I got in just in time, right before the Oscars, and but we, we, we just didn't see them before what weren't a lot of people mad at the oscars this year a lot of people disappointed by how it was handled yes the end was a bit of a mess okay. they changed up the order so instead of best picture being last they Which, did best picture Christ. third from last and made 
best actress and actor go after people assumed oh they're gonna have best actor go last they'll give it to chadwick boseman and he'll do like a send-off right and he'll win posthumously and it will be this great thing instead what happened is they put best actor last and gave it very deservingly so to anthony hopkins Mm -hmm. and people were furious so there was a lot of figuring out like so then why did they put it in this order the best sense i could make of it is it is awkward to have chadwick in that category not give it to him and then continue on not really so it it depends on who you ask a lot a lot of movie people i follow were like what made it so awkward is that we assumed and got carried away with like betting odds and that this was a, a one man race right and it it really wasn't because anthony hopkins was there, there's two movies this year at least from the ones that i saw that seemed built around let's just take this awesome actor and have them flex the entire time and that was the father with anthony hopkins and nomad land with francis mcdormand and both of them were sensational they neither of them were unbelievable movies, but just incredible they don't have performances. To be for best actor, best actress, right? And that's why I mean I was frustrated that Nomadland won Best Picture, but I don't know. I I I just could be wrong on Nomadland. A lot of people, a lot of people thought it was really good. A lot of people though agreed with me that overrated. that was breaking news for me because I didn't even know who won Best Picture this year. Really? Yeah, I did not know. It uh, it was kind of lame. The the director, I her name escapes me, seems chill as hell so i was really happy that she won best director as well i believe so it was weird i was i didn't think the movie was that good but i was after watching red carpet stuff i was like all right i fuck with this person i'm rooting (laughs) for them to win a bunch of stuff and uh the acceptance speech for best picture was awesome because everyone said a bunch of stuff then francis mcdormand got up there and started howling it was amazing okay i think it was a reference from the movie okay but she was like yo like, I forgot what she said, but she was like, this is for all my fucking dogs. Ow! <laughs> and everyone started howling. And I was like, even even when she's being weird, she's... She rules. She, I mean, she. Uh, I, I got into a lot of conversations during the Oscars. I, I, I love texting during award shows. That's such a good time. Uh, I'm glad that you didn't do it to me because I felt bad about it not seemed watching. like I mean, I, I noticed I texted you once like halfway through because I was like, why aren't I talking to Pete? And... Then I was like, you're clearly not watching. Yeah. So it was because you responded, uh, I'm actually not watching. I was like, I haven't seen a, I haven't watched a single second of it. Um, yeah. It was, I don't know. It was a weird, it, weird experience. Like the total opposite of, uh, of, of what happened with me and the, uh, the Grammys where I was like, I don't really, w- I don't really have any interest in this. I don't need it, whatever. And then like it came on and I had nothing else to do. I turned on the Grammys and had a great time. I was planning on watching the Oscars and then, uh, I was also planning on watching a bunch of the movies leading up to it, and I didn't have didn't end up doing that. I didn't have time, um, and so when it rolled around, I just had no interest in watching, and then I like didn't feel bad about missing it at all. Wow, that's yeah. rough. Yeah, should we just taking the year off? Punted. Not to put pressure on. Are you going to watch any of these movies at any yeah. point? Yeah, now that like now that I, there's no like real pressure to to yeah. meet the deadline. Why don't we do like a better Oscars Oscars show? So I was going to say I I don't want to now insert this pressure. But what if once you're caught up, we just spend a day and not and do knock out the mini ones and put them out there? I still would like to give them to the people. I don't hate the, especially if people were bummed about it because that makes me. I mean, we we've got I'm not we got people doing the Patreon thing, supporting us and plus, everything. Plus, I think it would be a good uh, a good like re-entry point for us into talking about movies and committing to to doing that because now movies are coming out. I don't know if you know. I think you actually told me this. Spiral is Spiral's coming out. Spiral is coming out. every day is a day closer to Spiral coming out. Spiral I think is uh not next week but the week after. Is it? Yes. Is it? I think it's That like sounds right. It's like May, May 13th. 13th? Yeah. yeah. Holy smokes. We're getting there. And something else is coming out soon. Um oh. I watched uh, Minari which was very good. Mhm. Quick uh, also, wasn't the, Mina- the Minari uh, woman like the star of the show? The best. She was so great. Brad Pitt. I uh, saw the the yeah. Brad Pitt clip. That was the only like the only clip that I saw 
other than uh, like the last presentation to Anthony Hopkins. And Joaquin Phoenix didn't seem into it, by the way. <laughs> no, he was like, but okay, I mean, and bye. You know how he, you know how Joaquin can be. She was excellent, though. She, I mean, she gets up there. She's like, "Hey, Brad, where are you going, baby? Like, get back here!" Like, I'm like, maybe like light sexual harassment of of Brad Pitt. And uh, I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen her speech, but she just she kept it so real and i mean to be up there at her age and i i think i don't think she's that old maybe 70s or something but yeah, she's not like knocking on the door right but i'm saying like for i don't know maybe i'm just new to the oscars and someone can give me an example of oh you, th- th- this happens all the time i mean it doesn't actually happen all the time i think that she was the I'll have to check. She may have been like the first. Um, there, there was some uh, ground broken with, I think, Asian actresses and something like that. We we talked well, about Steve Yen was the first Asian actor uh, nominated for best right. actor, which and that blew insane. our mind. Yeah, which it just goes back to like there's a lot of you don't realize shit's wrong sometimes until it's pointed out to you, and when you see that Steve Yen hadn't been or was the the first asian actor yeah up for best actor like you're like ah, that's there there There's has no to way be right be correct <laughs> and then you go back and you're like ooh, that oscar's so white thing was onto something anyway but she gets up there she hadn't been to the oscars before at her age killed it in this movie she was great i was so happy for her that she won and her speech was like yo i mean everyone all everyone is so dope. Like, I think I just got a little luckier than you guys. All right, bye. <laughs> That's awesome. Especially for especially for um it not being her primary language that she went up there and was just like yo, like just this is the coolest. Yeah, like this is not uh, about me. I mean, I think that it'd be very easy to go up there and just say like okay, thank you and kind of move on do the Joe Pesci thing. Mm-hmm. And she really was like Yo, like I have this moment, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something cool with it. She was, she was great. There were a lot of good speeches, though. Tyler Perry accepted an award for, I think it was, uh, uh, a career type uh, award thing, and he gave a uh, an awesome speech. A lot of the speeches were really good, which people get so annoying with, like, oh, I don't watch the Oscars because it's too political. Celebrities tell me what to do. It's like. Everybody's telling everyone what to do, man. Just, just, True. just take the good with the good, the bad with the bad, whatever it may be. But yeah, there were a lot. It was a big year for speeches, good speeches. She killed it. Tyler Perry killed it. Um, you know who didn't kill it? Who? Glenn Close. Still shut out. Oh, I was so happy about that though. <laughs> yeah. She was the you've darling. St- you've steered into like I hope Glenn Close never wins an Oscar. Yeah, there was a guy that was g- uh, given great Oscars content. I gave him a follow. He's from Entertainment Weekly or something or one one of those places, and uh, I tossed him a follow, and he was like, "Okay, she has to win after this." I was like, "No, she doesn't." <laughs> right. <laughs> this makes it even better now. Like she's going to be a part of Oscars history. That she makes it fun and she's so cool. She seems so great. And I've, shout out her. She she knows her her music knowl or her music history. And still, like yo, you get to come, but you never get to win. You can be at the Oscars. She looked great. I like the idea of doing like doing that more than like just giving somebody an Oscar as a fucking lifetime achievement award when it's not a lifetime achievement. Always award. pass like, on that. Like when Leonardo DiCaprio won for The Revenant, like. He probably didn't deserve to win for The Revenant. They just fucking gave him one. I think I was ready for that. I think that I fell into that, too, though. I was like, I mean, he's he ready. Absolutely How is he absolutely deserves not yeah. to, to win. And, like, he probably, it was probably overdue at he's that point. He's an Oscar-caliber actor. Yeah, but, like, uh, yeah, it was, it was. Uh, I'm okay with, with, like, leaning into, like, Glenn Close as the person who just never wins. Yeah, she she was great, though. I thought about doing something with, like, holy smokes. The guy from Hook is oh, yeah. out here doing debut <laughs> on television. Yeah, I, she she can't win though. I was uh, I wanted Amanda Seyfried to win because there was a great stat someone showed us where if she if Amanda Seyfried had won, 
then Glenn Close would have lost an Oscar to the Every mother, member of the <laughs> grandmother, and the daughter of Mamma Mia. That's incredible. All she would need to do is lose to the baby that dead Donna is awkwardly singing a, a, a totally different version of My Love, My Life to. I get to put that on the Soon playlist enough. now. Pumped. Soon enough. Yeah, give it a few years. <laughs> yeah, right. There was a kid, I forget his Coming name. Coming for that ass, Glenn but the, Close. The kid from uh, Minari wasn't nominated, but he was so good that I would have loved for him to... And also the kid from um, Jojo Rabbit. Wasn't he up for... Was he up for an Oscar last year? The kid from Jojo Rabbit? Yeah. Um, I don't remember. I don't I, think so. I don't think we ever talked about him as like a... I think we just talked about well, him How as good like, he was. That kid's the man. Yeah. But uh, and uh, what's his name? The uh, Jacob Tremblay won. Tremblay, sure. Tremblay. But I, I was talking about the kid from Jojo Rabbit, yeah. who is the best. Yeah. Uh, the se- no, like the second his friend. Believe you me, that is who I'm talking oh, about. You think okay. I care about Jojo? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You know, he definitely wasn't nominated. I care about uh, uh, Augie. O- I, th- I think so. And he is in. Uh, How he's use got the a, internet on this one. He's got a big role coming up. Uh, where he was cast as like the kid in something, and I forget what it was. Uh, Yorkie. Yorkie. That's right. Yorkie. What is he in? What is he in? He's he's in something coming up. Let's see. He got a, a like a big role. Uh, Taika Waititi. Sam. That is a loaded cast. I forgot about that. Uh, Archie Yates plays Yorkie, and he is in Home Alone. Oh, that's right. Very cool. The Home Alone reboot. He is uh, not Kevin McAllister, but wh- whoever the character is. Really? He's not Kevin? Oh, he's, well, like, he's, he's Kevin? like the new Kevin. Yeah. Interesting. That is going to be awesome. I'll happily see that. Did you see Home Alone 3? I did. Didn't like it. Yeah. It wasn't I think very good. No one wanted that. No. Really. They were like, they, wa- they wanted Culkin. You're right. And they didn't get him. Were any of the... Was I can't imagine Joe Pesci was doing Home Alone three. No, it's just like a comp- new kid, new uh, new Wet Bandits. And I, I and could, <laughs> I could see Home Alone three doing the Scrubs thing, where the like the the ABC Scrubs thing, where they keep uh, just like two, one yeah. of the ba- like yeah. I would be is Harry or Marv the Wonder Years guy? Marv is the tall guy. Yeah, Marv. Right. So the right the non Pesci guy. Yeah. So they keep marv and he's like got a new partner yeah and right yeah that he's would like, be the he's, sad he's like trying to keep the band alive and yeah. trying to replace like the lead singer yeah and the <laughs> reason they keep messing up the break-in and the robbery is that he doesn't have the same chemistry he has with harry but the whole time you're like yo you guys you and harry messed everything up too <laughs> right maybe, yeah. maybe it's you maybe you're just <laughs> the worst what what are they even trying to do? They're, they're they're trying to steal stuff, right? Eventually, they're trying to kill him. Yeah, I mean, like they they try to kill him eventually, which is honestly seems kind of fair given the things that he did to them. I mean, uh, we've said before that was the original jigsaw. That was the original saw. He puts them That's through true. some yeah. absolute torture chambers. Yeah, I, I wonder if they'd go back now and uh, polish up that movie. Maybe. If they were to go back, they'd be like, let's. let's I, I I bet they say we're going to kill him. No fewer than ten times in that movie. Yeah, definitely. I bet now they'd be like, "Let's let's not make it that overtly about like we're going to kill killing children." Ki- <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Like, let's, they're supposed to be like goofy, clumsy guys. Let's just keep murder out of it. Did you see uh, Macaulay Culkin just had a child with uh, Brenda Song? No, but congratulations to I didn't even know the, that they were that together. Couple. Who's Brenda Song? She was in uh, the Social Network. She was in. Um, oh yes, yeah. She's in a lot of stuff. She's beautiful. She she really is. So, congrats to them. Happy for them. Yes, but, yeah, partner I'm, Macaulay Culkin. That's right. Dakota Dakota Song, Song Culkin. Culkin. That is an awesome name. That is a great name. Shout out people. Also, that's just like a very, uh, and it's not hyphenated. I don't think it's just both their last names. Yeah, and it like just flows really well. Yeah, like Dakota Song Culkin. Yeah, just. Doesn't you wouldn't even know that that was a uh, was w- wouldn't even know that that was a secondary last name. Right. It's like who's somebody with uh, three names that is uh, you know what I'm saying? It's like is there's got to be an actor that's like 
I don't know, the guitarist from Vampire Weekend's name is like Brian. He goes by Brian Robert Jones. If I were a little more pretentious, maybe I'd go by David John Bean. Are there any actors out there that do that, that do like the middle name thing? I mean, there definitely are, but I don't know. Why can't I think of any? Yeah, Logan. uh, Logan Michael Green. Yes. Logan Tom Hardy. Logan Michael Green, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think he just goes by Mike Green. That's right, and he plays hockey. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we were sne- we're sneaky becoming a sports podcast, man. I don't hate it. Every so now and once then, in a while, yeah, just for a couple minutes. We watched baseball the other night. We sure fucking did. We buries wa- the lead because we watched an entire. We went to a soccer game first, but then we watched baseball. After we that. had a good sports night uh, in which we went to a game, the first sporting event that we've been to uh, in I don't know for me like a, over a year. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and for both definitely, I mean, and, for and both the best human beings, the best part of that night was uh, watching baseball on TV. <laughs> we're we're just big. I, I wrote this down in the notes for the show. There isn't a better duo at sitting at a bar and watching sports legitimately in the world than me and Pete. That's true. For real. We do a lot of things well. And just like no, oh, really don't. only for our purposes. <laughs> like like if we do something like we have fun with it. But I think that our greatest talent and there's no way that we could Measure use this, this. to to, to change the world or anything is just sitting down with each other vibing right vibing maybe a beer or two god good lord forgive us maybe a bud light seltzer or two have a game on and just talk about so much sports we talked about so much freaking sports we talked about the draft we talked about baseball and we, we talked about it in like like analytical good detail like, yeah like good detail you would pay that from you would pay money for that kind of analysis yeah. that we were getting into. What so I'm like, what could we? D- Again, there's there's no way that we can use this for anything. There's no, no so there's no jobs for that, right? There's no like, hey, have us sit at what we call it like a bar sit talk, <laughs> bar sit talks, That's right? And said with like the same cadence as bar Streisand. <laughs> yes, yeah, and but man. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just the end of that thought. But we were sitting there watching the sports, doing some beers, and I was great like, "Great game, too. God, we yeah. were treated. We were treated to a wonderful game. It was the uh, the Padres, <laughs> Lakers, <and> Dodgers, <laughs> Lakers, Mavericks. <laughs> yes, that's right. On the other screen, uh, Padres and Dodgers, and Fernando Tatis had two home runs. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you, I really missed tall drafts. Yeah, tall drafts, just extra big beers. I I I missed the question when you get a sixteen beer. or twenty. Oh, would you like uh, tall or short? What does it look like? Kidding me? I haven't seen human beings in (laughs) thousand years, and I'm sitting next to the like one of four (laughs) other human beings I've seen the last thousand years. Come on, we're celebrating. (laughs) We're taking baby steps here. Bring me a tall one. What are you crazy? (laughs) That's right. And when they ask me what kind I want, they say, "Do you want a tall or do you want a you?" Yeah. I'm like, "Fuck." (laughs) I was like, "Would you give him a break? He's on a ah (laughs) fuck." He's uh, on vacation. That's right. Yeah. He's he's having vacation unemployment. Also, uh, one of the sneaky best parts of that uh, of that Friday that we spent together. Friday? Saturday? Saturday. Yeah. Uh, we played some video games. And it was so great. You yeah. were like, yo, you ever play Mario Kart? You ever play Mario Tennis? And I was like, shit, yeah, it's like riding a bike. I haven't <laughs> played. It was probably the last video game I played 300 years ago. And we plugged it in. I don't th- had you fired it up yet? Nope. Got it right before you came over. Yeah. It just felt exactly like it con- I'd never played uh, Nintendo 64 with you or anything, but it just felt like an absolute continuation. We we, we just, were pre-gaming. Yeah. And, like had a couple beers. It just like, felt like being a young boy. Yeah. It was awesome. And I'll tell you, those Mario games, they never disappoint. Even on like the Switch, I downloaded the, the Mario Tennis one and I was like, I'm going to be so bummed if, like, this is too fucking fancy and, like, it's it's just a totally different game than the one that I remember. No, not really. Same game. It was so much fun. We got to do something with that. We, uh, I think that we're going to, we we should do a, a stream. We should do a live stream. We, we've uh, skipped the past couple of weeks of It's Monday and People Are Pissed. We're trying to get back in the Twitch game. We're going to do video game streams. We'll get back to It's Monday and People Are Pissed. Uh, Twitch.tv slash listen to brunch. That's not the one we were saying before. Nope, that's uh that's patreon.com slash listen to brunch. I not to be confused with listen to brunch.com slash Patreon, which is a link that doesn't exist. <laughs> I 
hope that people are going to be sending screenshots of the wrong URL not available. <laughs> yeah, we can just reroute that to. Uh, I mean, we uh, we the thunder music video or something like that. Yep, uh, that is. A, we should do like literally just listen to brunch dot com. It's just a link to the YouTube. It just redirects to the YouTube uh, thunder music video. I love that. Can we? If I were to get a Switch, would we be able to play each other on Twitch? Sure would. Really? Yeah. Ooh, now that's something but I might I th- consider. I th- but I think that like the the like why I got a Switch was for couch gaming yeah. because it has all the couch games. Yeah. And like I uh and I missed it. Like we we played Mario Tennis. like fuck I missed just we couch so, gaming. Yeah, we had so much fun. We played for a while before we went to the game. And then we came back, and uh, boy, did we just keep playing. Yep. <laughs> it was so much fun. There, uh, We got to call the horny police on Nintendo, right? There was one character named oh, uh, Pauline who was just a woman, and I didn't say just a woman in like <laughs> a less than, but I'm saying like it was just simply a, a like was, an adult person. It was so weird. Uh, randomly, they just put a person in this game. All these strange characters in uh, in Mario Tennis, and then there's just a woman named Pauline, and it's a, a human lady. Yeah, it's so weird. And they really played up the uh, like the kind of maybe Sharapova isms. Who is the? I'm sorry if I got the the tennis player wrong. Who's the tennis player that like yelled a lot when they played? Maria Sharapova. Maria where, like, Sharapova she, like, does the uh, the old like sort of like, like sexual. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, and people would yeah. get like big time horned out over yeah. that. There was right, a lot of that Kornikova. going on. Okay, it was Anna a lot Kornikova. of that going on with uh, with this character, and I can't remember how I fared playing with her, but I don't remember. I also do do remember there was just a a character named like Dry Bowser and Dry oh, yeah. Bones. Yeah, just... you were Dry Bones. You you beat me with Dry Bones. Dry Bones was uh was m- by far my strongest character. Great range on Dry Bones. I liked being Bowser. Yep, because it's just a. She's a big guy, just like Bowser. I kept uh, we. I think I accidentally found a glitch because the game kept ending because I kept breaking your rackets. Yeah. I would hit it so hard that if you tried to, I don't know if you, maybe like, you were supposed to like let it go and just be like, "This well, is I don't want the smoke." Yeah, there's like these power or, serves now in like the, in the game that like you got you got to time it correctly and then you just absolutely serve it up uh and if you get in the way of it you, you try to block it but if you get in the way of it and it's too powerful then it breaks your racket and i think you only get two rackets per per match hmm. and you just kept smash smashing my rackets and i lost it was very frustrating that's our new podcast it's called smashing rackets on bar talk bar, bar talk sport bar, bar, bar talk, talk radio <laughs> bar talk sits smashing rackets you a rackets fan <laughs> we should get some tennis players on rackets just calling it rackets. Yeah, well, it's short for smashing rackets. It's true. Smashing rackets. I do like just the idea of just making everybody call it rackets. Man, what if we had a, what if we had a, <laughs> a podcast? We could sell this to Washed, called Smashing Rackets, and it's just us talking about playing Mario video games. What we should do is we should do a we should do a thing where every big sporting event that comes up we should create like an offshoot brunch sort of like what we did for shitty nhl gifts yeah where like season preview shitty nhl gifts and yeah. like treat it as its own brand yeah and then like when when there's ever like a tennis major we'll do smash and rackets yeah and then we'll release a podcast under the smash and rackets uh brand and we'll do it for other sports as well so we would, we would, would it all be under one cloud would it come on the brunch feed yeah i like that idea yeah and, like, it doesn't matter how much we know about the sport. Yeah. We're going to talk about it. Shoot. I mean, we should have done it for this week because you I, you knew a lot more about the draft than I expected. Yeah. I thought that you, you were go. all locked into hockey and the conversation turned to the draft. And we both realized, like, uh-oh, are both of us very <laughs> up on the draft? Let's go. We're talking edge rushers. We were doing the whole nine. Yeah. What would this? What would our draft podcast be called? Well, it would, have to be, it would just have to be – no, it wouldn't be, like, draft specific. It would have to be football. Like, I think that the, the – the sport gotcha. dictates the name of the podcast. So that be, uh, way, like we do one for the Super Bowl, we right? Do one yeah. for whatever. Yeah, I like this idea a lot. Yeah, same. All right, so smashing rackets for tennis. Mm-hmm. What would it be called for football? Oh man, um, tackling. It has uh, to be like something like nothing, nothing that hints that we really know what we're talking about. Yeah. It's just got to be something. 
a little goofy, a little fun, and generic. Well, like the line of scrimmage. <laughs> People well, are like, we can is that, brainstorm. Is that a play on something, <laughs> or is that just, a, just something in football? They're like slinging spirals or something. Uh, something about ducks. Who ordered the duck? <laughs> I love saying that. I say all the time you play football with your friends. Ooh, who ordered the quack, 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 quack? Who ordered the <laughs> you duck? You are work huge on the quack, 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 quack. I'm, uh, what about like you. tidy spire, spires? Tidy, tidy, tidy spires, and it's uh, Kyrie Irving wearing <laughs> spires. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, uh, yeah, it's like a cartoon of Kyrie rocking Sperry's. Listeners, if you got any uh if you got any name suggestions for all the sports, we need yeah. one for football, we need one for would hockey just be called shitty NHL gifts? Yeah, or, I think so. Okay, give us a baseball one. Um I feel like baseball ones are often are dong related, but I think that's kind of overplayed. It's, kind not, of it's not a brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. W- 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 no, the baseball one's got to be thinking too. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah we fucking crushed that yes. immediately. Baseball yes. one's got to be thinking too. Thinking too. Yeah. Oh God, don't you just want to? Aren't you so pissed that no, you're I, doing brunch right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> just gonna say, you want to want to delete this episode? Oh boy, we could do think. Yeah, thinking too. Shitty NHL gifts. What's it called? Kyrie and Spires. <laughs> Kyrie tidy Spires. Kyrie. Yeah, tidy Spires in for football and. Um, what other sports are there? Uh, basketball? Basketball, yeah. Basketball. Uh, thinking two. <laughs> thinking, thinking three. three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thinking. What, wait, what do they call the. Uh, is, is there another. Oh, you know, we call. Uh, no, how about we call the basketball one? I Thinking three is better than this, but. Uh, hockey assist could be the oh basketball God. one. People say hockey assist in basketball way more than they say it in hockey. Absolutely. I like to say it in hockey sometimes. Well, someone he... gets a secondary assist, <laughs> yeah. like, give him the hockey assist. <laughs> Why do you, but we've, we've talked about that before. That just, that, that term just weirds me out. Hockey assist? Yeah. It's stupid. I think it's so Very I stupid. Think, I think it's so weird. Call it a secondary assist. That's what it is. Yeah. Call it an apple. But True. picking apples could be the, the like the minor league hockey <laughs> one or something. We could do like one. It's like college hockey. <laughs> that just sounds way too much like John Bucci. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I thought you were making a cow joke. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's instead of cow ca- ca- college. <laughs> you know what this is college. right now. <laughs> This it is co- college hockey. This is Wolf of Wall Street, where he's talking about how, by the grace of God, he drove home so smoothly without a scratch on the car. We just said ten minutes ago, when we talk about sports, it is electric. We are the <laughs> best at talking sports with each other. We we then proceeded to have the stupidest <laughs> conversation about sports, which I'm pretty sure is like on par with whatever we were doing when we were sitting at bars talking about yeah. sports. Yeah. So we're we kind of had the mirror held up to us, but. I'm into it, man. Thinking two and thinking three are some of the best names for podcasts I've ever heard. That's right. I'm excited to do that. Yeah, we'll have to. Um, I was gonna say we'll have to do one of those soon, but I want to do Affleck Week. So get on the Patreon. It's the next, thing. the next big sports thing. Um, I mean, the Kentucky Derby. Do you want to do horse racing? <laughs> Kentucky Derby's this weekend. Here, horsey. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ho- uh, horse coat. Like Morse code, <laughs> it's not bad. Uh, horse and horse and around. <laughs> oh, what the fuck! You just that? spilled water on yourself. I, just, I didn't spill water on myself. I literally yeah, just squeezed my water bottle and it dumped water on my splish, pants. Splash, splash! <laughs> Someone's on fun vacation. We could do. Uh, what if we made a, our horse podcast named after John Ham? Yeah. Hung like hung John, like a ham. Hung like hung like uh, John Ham. I right. saw. I follow some like Mad Men screenshot accounts. Those are the best. I uh, just out of context Mad Men. Not even though it's like Mad Men quotes, and then I follow another one that's like Mad Men underscore quotes. Like I follow multiple <laughs> accounts, and you know what? Whenever I click on it, 
I don't want to call anybody out, but like a lot of our friends, like you, you click on the account and it's like followed by people we know mm-hmm. are following these accounts. And it's a nice little, for, for all people, shut up, people posting pictures of their babies when they're like, timeline cleanse, and it's a picture of their kid. It's more of a timeline cleanse when I get like a nostalgic hint of uh, a TV show I really like. You know, like when you're scrolling, scrolling through, a, a picture of a baby isn't a timeline cleanse. A picture of a baby is part of the Instagram experience. It's true. You're getting those, and it's a great part. It's it's why you're on Instagram. Mm-hmm. It's you're seeing something you like, but something that really just resets everything. Just like totally, totally like out of the norm. I right. Guess. Yeah. Right. So something that totally resets everything would be like watching a rerun of The Office or watching a re- something that you know you get a little like smack of familiarity. Mm-hmm. I love these Mad Men accounts, man. So what if we did an only in Boston podcast where like it was a Boston sports podcast and we just talked about all sports that know Boston? It would be like when we did the Oilers hour on, the, That's right. on our WEI hockey show a million years ago. Yep. That'd be the best. That was the most passionate. Uh, we were like, yo, the show's on so early. There's no way someone's going to call in the first hour. What do we want to talk about? I got thoughts on the Oilers. You think this German kid dry saddle is going to be anything? Let's discuss. It was the best. That was just after they won uh, the McDavid lottery. Yeah. Too. Yeah. It turns out that that was a pretty big day for them. Yes. Connor McDavid, pretty good. Uh, we also talked about uh, during the Oilers hour, we talked about how the Buffalo Sabres were big fucking babies about getting Jack Eichel. I forgot Remember about that. that? They, yeah. Yes. Oh, they my were like, God. This is so stupid. Like, yeah. man, because they had the best odds. Yeah. They had the best odds to win McDavid, which thank fucking God. Knowing know. what we know about the Oilers. I mean, what, knowing, well, I guess the Oilers aren't much better, but like knowing what we know about the Buffalo Sabres, if we had to watch uh, Connor McDavid waste away in uh, in Buffalo over yeah. these past five years. Oh, I would I would ruin it for me as a hockey fan. Lord forgive me, I'm going to do a little uh, shitty NHL gifts the podcast, but it's they didn't get a first round pick at the NHL trade deadline at all, huh? Who the Oilers? The Sabers. Sabers? Best no. the b- biggest asset yeah. they traded was Taylor Hall. No, they got Anders Bjork. That's so funny that the worst team in the league, like the biggest disaster in the league, couldn't even get a first round pick. I know that technically they could have if you believe that vegas was offering a first round pick but like even awful teams will just sell off pieces and get first round picks teams usually throw them away willy-nilly at the deadline yeah nick felino got a first round pick yeah it's almost like teams like nick felino more than they like taylor hall which legitimately might be a thing um we got some lena waith news that's true talked to lena the other day yeah, uh, she said, "What's up?" Sends love. It's good that she still likes us. It is very good that she still likes. Well, I don't know why she wouldn't though. No, I, I, I know she, what you're she, saying. Like, she, like she's she should so have forgotten big. about us. She's so big and so beloved that she should have forgotten about us by now. But I think that's why she's so beloved, right? It's true. I mean, she's the best. She's awesome, and she will be the star of. Master of None presents Moments in Love, and it's an entire season. It's a third season of Master of None, centered around Denise. I believe Dev is in it, but it's but Aziz is more uh, She's, the director. He, well, he's more of what like Lena Waithe was in the earlier seasons, I guess. Where like he shows up every now and then. Yeah, yeah. So he uh, Aziz Ansari is directing the season. Lena and Aziz wrote it. I think that that is going to be an awesome combination. Obviously, she wrote, obviously they wrote Thanksgiving together. I went back and watched that. I rewatched I rewatched a few Master of None episodes recently, and I forgot how legitimately excellent that show is. What are the, what are the like the Master of None episodes that stand out to you? Because for me, it's Thanksgiving, and it's um the. The one in the apartment where like mornings. That's mornings. so that was okay. bef- before Thanksgiving. That was my favorite episode. I think okay. that I think that mornings is the best bottle episode ever. Really? Yeah, legitimately so good. And I didn't know until I rewatched it recently. And I've I've watched that episode a million times. I didn't know that uh, Eric Wareheim directed that. Oh, really? Yeah, good for him. It's a cool. It's th- that that show was a cool group that they had of like 
acting, writing, directing. Like, let's get all, let's just get a bunch of talented people and let them flex. Yeah, and that episode, yeah, Mornings is so great. Uh, Noel Wells is great in that show. But again, everybody was really good in that show. Um, yeah, I watched the one the other day <laughs> where uh, <laughs> Brian's dad tells him that like he's dating somebody, and Brian's like, "Oh, cool." Uh, like I, I'm glad that you can talk to me about this stuff, and he's like, "Yes, but there's a problem. There's another woman," and he's like, "What? You're dating <laughs> two women?" And he's like, "Yes, the other woman has a like th- this one woman that I like makes uh, she makes me feel at home, and she makes this she's a great cook, and she makes me so happy. The other woman has a great dog." And I can't imagine not being around that dog. So every time he goes to break up with one of them, uh, he's like convinced not to. Yeah, like yeah. they'll bring. Yeah. She like she uh, the the first one he goes to is like, hey, like I made this like kimchi soup or whatever, like this stew. And it's like all of his favorite ingredients. It's like a thing that he didn't even know existed, and he tastes it. <laughs> and she's like, there. I have so many recipes like this that I'm meaning to show you. And he takes a spoonful and he goes, this is interesting news. <laughs> <laughs> So that cuts him, and he's like, I must break up with the other woman. And then, like, he goes to break up with her, and the dog comes in. And then uh, he's talking to him, and he's like, both have broken up with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that that show is, uh, that show is great. And obviously there's, um, obviously there's a conversation of, like, how is Aziz Ansari viewed right now? And well, I think that's a big what's reason. the world's comfort level with him putting forth another project and what's his comfort level with doing anything that's going to put him in the public eye. I have to imagine that's why, uh, or at least part of the reason why that Denise is like the main character totally. in this season, because it is a soft landing for, uh, for master of none to come back. If, if Aziz isn't like the focal point. Right. And we thought, I remember we thought there was no way in the world that there was going to be a season three of Master of None, and this was before that. Um, this is before that article, just because it just didn't seem like it, it, everybody just kind of got too big for Master of None. Right. It seemed like a perfect. Um, it seemed honestly, it seemed like kind of like the band Fun, where it was like a bunch of people who were pop or th- three people who were. It was poppin'. a moment in time. Exactly. Like they, Nate Roos, all this talent, Jack Antonoff. Uh, I don't. I honestly don't even know what he did in that fucking band. But uh, Jeff Basker, like coming off the Kanye stuff, like they all kind of met in. Shout out uh, Andrew Dost. Dost. I didn't want to exclude him, but yeah, like they all the, the, these ships passed in the night at the right time, and they were like, "Yo, for three years or whatever it was, let's we can make some really cool stuff." But this probably isn't going to last very long. That's what Master of None seemed like. Yeah. But anyway. He was lightly soft blocked, canceled, whatever it may be, and this is, I guess, this is how he comes back. He did have that stand up special, which that yeah. stand up special was very bad, kind of lame. It was very really, bad. I, I, I was so annoyed with him wearing a distressed Metallica "Ride the Lightning" shirt. I was I, the whole thing was my favorite, but Lena being back and everybody being back. I think is great because Lena seemed like she had gotten way, 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 way too big for this to carry on, and now yeah. she's and in now that. and now that's like now it's a uh, well, Lena has taken off as a director and a writer, but I still don't really see her too much acting wise. Yeah, she made a uh, she she had a short run as a character in The Shy, but I think that was. More of like a... I'm going to cameo myself. Right, yeah. sort of thing. She ran for... There was a mayoral race, okay. and she was one of the candidates. And she she's awesome in in that show. Like, we talked about it when it, it came out, but like she holds all of the... There, there, there's a lot of realness to that show, but she holds a lot of the silliness together. Mm-hmm. Like She's what kind of keeps everything grounded. I ironically like the straight man. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I um I laughed out loud and rewound watching the scene in Thanksgiving when uh she has her girlfriend over 
and they're making eyes at each other or whatever and her mom's all mad and she's like oh don't act like you weren't looking at her oh, you're looking at her the way that you used to look at rachel in friends i always thought that it was joey that y- you had the hots for and she's like that character's a fucking idiot mom <laughs> <laughs> not wrong yeah. uh Joe's the worst. That and uh, the the scene in the art gallery, I think, from season one, where she was like, she's like, I forget what she said, but like, I can make your girlfriend like orgasm in less than oh, thirty seconds. Yeah, it was yeah, so yeah. funny. Yeah, well, yeah. She says, I pro- I provide a service. Oh, I provide like a you, service. You just yeah, can't yeah, yeah. Bring. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited to see that. I'm glad it's back. Rewatching some of the old episodes. That show was um, that show was really really good. So shout out Lena. Glad she's, I would say, I'm not going to say back because she doesn't take a break. She's in freaking everything. But I'm glad that she's back, like, screen-wise. Yeah. On screen. And that character is so good. So, I don't know. I don't know if Eric Wareheim will be back. Who knows? Because are they, like, I can't tell if they're, like, a crew. She plays Dev's, like, best friend growing up. And yeah. Arnold seems like... He's maybe a new more, friend i don't know what the yeah right i think that that uh they can arnold that, though yeah and like whatever like the, it's they're it's sort of like the uh the seinfeld dynamic where like all the friends aren't really that friendly yeah, like, like Elaine outside and George aren't he, friends. right yeah they they are like tied together through uh through jerry and i think that's the same in master of none where they're tied together through dev um i blew it the other day washed called me for not washed uh circling back called me for a um scene a a, a bit Mm -hmm. segment that's the word they do where they cold call somebody and fells called me i my phone was so bad my phone's trash i have the, the oldest phone in the world and i won't get a new one but it sounds like it sounded like absolute shit i didn't even realize that like will wasn't there i think i asked will a few questions it was a mess but it was a good time and uh, didn't they? They gave me the. They were like, "Hey, pub the Patreon. What are you guys working on?" And I didn't tell. I forgot about Affleck Week. The whole thing was a real disaster. But uh, it did remind me. We should like mess. Not mess is the wrong word. We should. Uh, <laughs> we should involve Dylan more, because. I feel like we got to involve the other guys first because we've already done something with Dylan and yeah. I don't want to make the like the wash guys be like, we're only interested in Dylan. Right. They were like, I, I wasn't even making jokes when I was on with them. But that it, may, it was either Dave or KJ or Brett. Who, who knows who is in the mix? <laughs> nice man. <laughs> yeah. I just I mean, my, my phone is trash. But they were like, Dylan hasn't said anything this whole conversation, but we just want to let you know. You're getting huge belly laughs <laughs> out of uh, out of Dylan. I think that Dylan is legitimately entertained by us. Yeah, I I, I don't think that he gets us, but he's right. definitely like, I don't know what's happening here, but it's something. He said that Dylan versus Dylan felt like two aggressive stand-up comedians doing their act at him, which is correct. Exactly what our guest segments are. <laughs> yeah, I love that. We should have him. I was thinking we should have him um we should get him into Father John Misty. Because a big staple from from listening to Circling Back, I'm picking up that a move is throw something at Dylan and he'll be like the fuck What is, is this? this? Yeah. Which is maybe why he's so well suited to do stuff with us because we're the definition of what the fuck is this. It's true. But Father John Misty, we were saying last week how easy it is to get into Father John Misty these days. I think that Dylan might beg to differ. Dylan might be that challenge that I want to go after. We also got a scoop about Father John Misty. That's right. We got a scoop that Father John Misty is planning a show at the I didn't this year. know. I didn't know if that was uh, like kosher to to drop. If we should do that or what? I mean, because I've been looking at the Father John Misty Reddit, and let me tell you, those folks are getting restless. <laughs> really? Yeah. The most recent post on Father John Misty Reddit is, I'm sorry to have to do this but and it's the meme spoken with the stick uh yeah, oh yeah do, do something. something yeah yeah they're like people on on, on well, uh father john misty reddit are like what is this guy's problem when father john misty fans have turned on father john misty because everyone turns on father john misty that's like the people are people love to not like father john misty 
But if Father John Misty fans are like, hey, I've noticed something about him I find less than perfect, you know something's up. Well, should we drop a little nugget and then like maybe like clip it and and drop it in the uh, drop it in the Father John Misty Reddit? Sure. Give him a little give him a little something to chew on to keep him uh to keep him entertained. Will Father John Misty get mad at us if we're breaking news or spilling beans? No. Did you say where it was going to be yet? I did. did say- yeah. I guess we won't give full details on on. Who might be performing with him? What else it might involve? Right, but it is coming uh, as a lead-up, maybe, or a post-album show. And with, it there's there's like it's going to be a production. I can only tell you, like we are so there. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Very into the idea of going. Would they not let us go? If we broke the news. Because we broke the news? We put on a disguise. I love that. We show up rocking some Bud we, Light. We got a little we got maybe a maybe a tag under our shirt, like we go undercover. That's right. So uh there's a new Father John John Misty album coming, and there's a big show at coming. I can't believe we've broken news. This feels weird. All right. Well, we gotta go hide from the cops. The which ones? Father John. Undercover. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck.